go up. And welcome to Musicians and Beyond with John Sarabian and Mark Lahorn, where we bring you the backstage info on the life, lyrics, and the long journeys of the music industry. Hi, Mark. Hi, John. How's your week going? Fantastic. Could not be better. Awesome. I, I'm very excited for this guest that we have sitting in studio with us. I am as well. I'm excited for the guest. I'm excited for our, our location shoot today where we're sitting in this wonderful home. Tell yeah. us about it. Yeah, this is pretty cool. We have we have a couple of studios. we got uh, UMA Studios in Malden. We have Windcam in Winchester. We weren't able to obtain those today. And we are at a home of a Instagram influencer called feather glass so any of you interior designers and uh, gardeners go on and follow feather glass we thank john and ellen shop for opening their doors and letting us in that's right feather glass studios feather glass studios and i gotta thank while we're talking to mark bucchino who was able to get in touch with our guest and make this happen he wasn't able to come in today but uh, we miss you, Mark, and thank you for We really need everything. to thank him for that. We've had a wonderful conversation before we started recording with Shannon Jackman. Yes, yes, we're excited to, to have her. Um, let's welcome Shanna Jackman. Welcome, yeah. Shanna. <laughs> How are you? I'm just so proud you guys got said it right, too. Well, <laughs> we did a little practice beforehand. <laughs> we were okay. well coached. We were, we were kind of scared to screw it up, you know, honestly. I appreciate that, but... I do. I appreciate that. Well, welcome to Stoneham. And again, thank you. Feather Glass Studios. Feather Glass it Studios. It is yeah. amazing. In yeah, here. it's nice, right? Oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm. I'm pretty sure I follow her on yeah. Instagram. <laughs> yeah, you must. She has a couple hundred thousand followers, so uh, yeah, you're probably one of them. I'm pretty uh, sure. I'm gonna make sure she follows familiar. you now. Thank you. That would be lovely. Yeah, that would yeah. be lovely. I just won't post any photos of my home unless I can get her advice. Well. You never Just know. Tell she me might. what to do with this corner right here. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we're excited to have you in. You've had a busy 24 hours. You. Had a show last night that was just about a packed house. I actually watched it live on oh, on video. Nice. You didn't see my name pop up there, yeah. and <laughs> I try to look every so often. Yeah, I, I noticed that. Went. No, great, great turnout. Yeah, it was fun. People are very so wonderful. The staff is great. The food was awesome, actually. And I don't usually eat before I sing, and so but I was like, I gotta try. There's so food. tell us about the venue. Yeah, so it's located right on Main Street in Peabody. Um, Stancy's Country Ranch. Um, it's my first time there. Excellent. Um, but yeah, super cool. Like they had all the garage doors, you know, open. It was an absolutely gorgeous night. So we were playing right, almost like remind me of downtown Nashville in a lot of ways. In the sense that the doors were open, we're right in the corner, so people can walk by and hear you. And I was waving at a little kid and waving at the red light, you know, and she was like dancing, and I was like, hey. That's great. <laughs> How fun is that? Do you get down to Nashville much? Um, I haven't been um, since COVID, unfortunately, the pandemic. But yeah, I was going back and forth a lot, recorded quite a few songs there, and was networking a lot. Um, people that I've been in contact said it was always um, best to really just have your roots in one place and then go back and forth and start networking. And then when you want to choose to move, if you choose to do so, that would work out well. So. I think that's great. I think it's good advice. And you keep your base here at home and you start establishing a new one and, and the networking that you get and the opportunities to grow your, your, your diversity in your music is a wonderful opportunity down there. Yeah. No matter what music you play, they, yeah. it's, a, it's a really great atmosphere and just feel, feels like home when you go there too. It's also when you go to a restaurant when my first visit there, they go to a restaurant the waitress is like, before she even asks you if you want anything to drink, she's like, oh, so you're a singer, musician, what do you do? It's like, oh, I'm home, this is great. Like, they know me, this is awesome. That is awesome. Yeah, they get you're me. You're really making a big name for yourself lately. Oh, thank you. You know, in a, in a good way. In a good way. Oh, I hope so. That's good. <laughs> That's good. I'll be like, uh oh, I gotta Google. No, myself. you got. I mean, one of your videos alone has what two million Over views three now. Over yeah. three. Do you know how many people that is? That's holy a, shit. Well, yeah, it, it, it's funny. It's you don't. Thank you. you don't ever want to be known as the notorious Shayna Jackman. Hey. Or the the infamous Shayna Jackman. Right. I guess. You are the famous Shayna oh, Jackman. Oh. Well, thank three you. million views. And by the way, it's Shanna. Yeah, he did. I did. I was going to say. Yeah. Listen, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. It is going to happen because we're very careful how much you say right now. I know. (laughs) He is. Absolutely. (laughs) No, don't worry. Yeah, no, it's. Yeah, you got. 
over 3 million hits. What's that feel like? I mean, that's crazy. I don't know how to describe it. What is, what is really amazing, too, I think even more so of that, is that the amount of people that created additional YouTube videos, TikTok videos, Instagram videos, and if you, you know, search that in, in different languages, and then I get messages from all over the world. It's, oh, yeah, yeah. it's overwhelming. It's overwhelming, I'm sure. Yeah, but I'm sure. It's good. And, it's good, yeah. And that song has ties to your day job. Yeah. Tell us about the song and what you do during the day. Yeah, so I do it now part-time. I do, um, I'm at this point in my life, Monday through Friday and weekends off and holidays off is a really nice thing. Um, but didn't have that for almost 17 years of being a public safety dispatcher. I was also a reserve police officer at time. I was a crisis negotiator for the SWAT team for um, some time and dabbled in a lot of different stuff. So um, as a public safety dispatcher, um, answering 911, and it's a small town, so... Um, you're the one dispatcher answering everything. So when people come into the police department and just want to fill out an application for their license to carry or had a question or anything, I'm also managing that, the business line, 911, dispatching for fire, police, EMS, all of that. And then the officers come in and say, hey, can you print this for me or can you do that? So you have like these. Yeah, you do it all. You do yeah, it all. So, so you wrote a song yeah. about the public safety dispatches, which is incredible we, we have ties here. I'm a firefighter. Yeah. Mark is a retired from the sheriff's department and a military person, and you are dispatcher. Awesome. Awesome. So I've always thought that dispatchers never got enough credit. They're kind of the glue that keeps everything together, but it's the glue that dries clear and no one sees them. <laughs> yeah, well, we're, you know, we're that face you never see. There's a lot of time callers think that we're en route. <laughs> Yeah. Like, yeah. The, well, why aren't you here? I'm like, well, I'm not technically driving. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, I'm telling them where to go. So, yeah, innocently enough, a lot of people wouldn't see who we are, and we're just that voice. Um, so, yeah, I wanted to do a song that um, highlighted. Um, and I really didn't think, though, um, civilians would understand this song or maybe connect with it. I, I didn't have this profound, like, this is going to be a big, like, I had no idea it was going to turn into what it did. Late one night, heading on home, driving too fast, radio on, hugging that curb a little too tight. Now he's hanging on for his life, upside down and all alone, hoping he could reach his phone. TV, all of a sudden it's hard to breathe. She tries to get up, then hits the ground. Wheel of fortune spins around, sends up a prayer. Thought this is it as she pushed the button around her.
But I was hoping to give a voice for people behind the scenes and maybe not, they don't feel alone because we also suffer from PTSD. We also like, some people think, well, if you're not on scene, like how can you have those feelings? And I'm like, I'm envisioning, I have to ask and get a clear picture of what's happening for the safety of my officers, my EMS, like whatever that may be happening. I'm giving instructions on how to save someone's life. Like it could be a lot of stuff and so, it brings up a lot of emotion when I'm talking about it, but we're, we're envisioning what that scene looks like. And sometimes people tell us the scene and then the officers get there like, oh yeah, clear. And clear? I thought this dog was being torn apart by this animal and somebody, the way they were talking about a situation and they're like, yeah, no, it was nothing like that at all. So sometimes <laughs> the caller can really embellish on yeah, okay. a lot too. Caught sorry. up in the moment, I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, nice. it's, and what's, it's, what's the name of that song? Oh yeah, we gotta keep talking about that. I'll talk, and you got to keep redirecting me. Um, so, yeah, this song's called Answer the Call. I co-wrote it with Ayla Brown, who's prevalent in this area, went to Nashville for many years. A lot of people know her um, now being on um, Country 102.5. And I also um, wrote it with Lance Carpenter. He is a gentleman that's come back and forth. He's from Arkansas, lives in Nashville. He's an amazing writer, amazing vocalist, um, great guy all, all around. But he actually had... Um, ties to working with FEMA. FEMA. So I felt like putting them two together because also um, Ayla was very much connected with the military, like and her. Um, I just felt like she could have, they both have a lot of respect and understanding of what I would want for this song. Mm -hmm. So I came into, we recorded, we wrote it in her living room in Nashville. Um, and I said, I want it to be answer the call and I want to, this is what I want. And they really helped me to develop that. And the part that got really um, connected with other people, the domestic violence aspect of the song, was really a call that I was trained on as a dispatcher. So a lot of people are like, oh, I didn't know that you could call and order a pizza and, and get help. And, and they think it's a code, which it's not a code. Um, but it's a way somebody, a victim, was able to get help by disguising what she really needed. The purpose of the call, yeah. And I thought that, that always stayed with me, and I've had calls very similar to that. So I wanted to put that in the in the song too, and that's really what I think took off that portion of it. Yeah, I can see why it's a fantastic song. Absolutely. Thank you. You know, I like it. And you mentioned something about the military. Mm -hmm. And Mark and I at Musicians and Beyond want to dedicate today's full podcast to Paul Monty who just recently passed away. He's a retired school teacher, mm -hmm. and he's a gold star father. And he's done so much for so many in getting the word and the information out there. And our guest today has a close tie with Paul. Um, without crying, right? Because he has only been like two days I think, since he passed. Um, well, I'll tell you what, if he knew I was talking about him, he wouldn't want to talk about himself. <laughs> He's just that kind of man. He's always focused on the honor of his son who um, sacrificed his life to try to save a comrade three times. And on that third time, he was killed in Afghanistan in 2006. <sighs> and uh, it became like his legacy, he felt, to um, keep his son's name alive. And he was the first Medal of Honor recipient, his son, since the Vietnam War, and that President Obama had given his father, the Medal of Honor. Um, I've gone uh, over the years when I started wearing police uniform and singing the national anthem, I've had a lot of military organizations then reach out, one of which was Rolling Thunder right in the beginning. And that connection grew to meeting a lot of families, Gold Star families. And if people don't know what a Gold Star family is, I know you guys do, but um, Gold Star means that they had lost husband, wife, son, child. Um, in active duty. So, um, so Paul was always a uh, face of Gold Star families and, um, and, and honoring his son and, and was an amazing teacher. And um, just the biggest heart in the world. And, uh, and it's felt by many, many people. But he would want me to talk about his son. He wouldn't want me to talk about him. And what gives me great joy is knowing that he's with him now. And um, 
he's with a few others in our small community or large community, I would say, that recently passed too, that were very much organizers of the Jared C. Monte motorcycle ride that they do every year in June around the um, <clears throat> it was anniversary of his passing. Um, because Jared not only rode a truck, but he also rode a motorcycle. And um, I mentioned the truck because if people follow country music. They may know of the song Lee Bryce sang called I Drive Your Truck. And it's an incredible story um, of how that song came about. I don't know if we wanted to go into that. But um, when I started meeting Paul throughout these different military events I was doing, um, I was asked to sing the anthem at his son's ride. And I got to ride in the truck with Paul during the ride, and Paul would describe to me um, the exact ride and why we take these routes. And it was like, well, this is where my son played ball, and this is where my son did this, and this is where. Um, wow. And it was, it was great. I was looking around in the truck. It's good to have that opportunity um, at that time. And that song, um, he didn't even know. He heard it on the radio and had no idea it was about him. Um, he knew another gold star mom that drove her son's vehicle so he called her like i think either she called him or he called her i think she called him like oh did you hear this song it's like about us you know it's how ironic but lo and behold he had an interview in npr some time ago and a um this woman connie um from nashville heard it and she um started writing and she brought two other individuals in for this song and um, they later were able to get to connect him and tell him that, hey, this was actually about you and um, wow. your interview at NPR. And he had a great relationship with the three of the songwriters. He'd always be like, I'm going to connect you with them, you know. And I'd just be like, oh. Wow. But, uh, That's pretty heavy. We saw the touching post you had on your social media the other day after Paul died, and Lee Bryce had one as well. And um, So, yeah, I think it's important for the listeners and the audience to know that story and, uh, and yes, the please. fact that we have someone like you to tell us about it. But, you know, Paul Monty, um, keeping his son Jared Monty's uh, memory alive for all those years and uh, driving that truck, and it's, it's a special song. Uh, if you haven't heard it, I suggest you go listen to it. Yeah, yeah. Very happy that you were able to, you know, have spent some time with Paul and, and be able to share in that, um, you know, the, the way that he carried his son's memory on. It's a special thing. Um, I feel truly blessed to have known him and um, his kindness. We would meet and have lunch or even just this past month, uh, June, um, he, he came to the ride and he was not well at all, um, which was really hard to see. Um, but what <clears throat> Everyone was trying to encourage him to just go home, go home, get out of the sun. It was a very, very hot day. And uh, I bring this up to show what type of um, honor he always gave his son to this, this country, to our military families. Um, I, he said to me, I was about to go sing the anthem for the event, and uh, he's like, no, I'm not leaving until I hear you sing. And then... Um, I go and stand to try to sing, and I look over, and he's trying to struggle to get out of his wheelchair to stand for the anthem. And it's like, and his fragileness, and he's this giant to everybody, but he's this small guy, right? And to be sick and then be much smaller. Um, so it was really hard. Um, at that moment, I actually had to tell people to give me a minute, um, just to see how proud he still stood, even in his frail and I, I think it's important to note that, you know, Paul not only carried the memory of his son and represented him at all the events for the Gold Star families, but he carried that for a lot of families and uh, carried the memories of a lot of children and sons and daughters and fathers and mothers that were killed in the line of duty. And he didn't want to stop. Right. Like when he was going in, that, in and out of the hospital, not understanding his diet, didn't have his diagnosis yet. I'd be like, please, Paul, slow down. I know you don't want to, but please take care of yourself. And he's like, I have to be somewhere. I have to be on a plane. I have to go here. I got to do this. This camp is dedicated to my son and I need to be there and I need to do that. He would his responsibilities, like in his home and everything else was always last. Everything about him was always last. That was, um, he had a mission and wow. yeah, yeah, we just all got to keep wow. it going. Well, yeah. it, mm -hmm. well, you have some fond memories of him and uh, everyone I'm sure is going to keep all the good things, all the hard work that he's done, keep it going. Absolutely. He left an amazing, proud legacy. 
Mm. And, and I hope uh, the Gold Star families and everyone that he's represented appreciate the work he did. And, and I hope everyone that ever hears that song appreciates the sacrifice that his family and he made. Um, his son lost his life and, and that family had to go on without him. And uh, we owe a debt of honor, uh, gratitude to Jared and to Paul. So Absolutely. both of you up there together, I'm we're glad you're together finally. Amazing reunion, I'm sure that was. And his, his ride, I even had my, my, in case it was cold, I wasn't sure because I'm wearing a tank top. But, um, you know, this is one of the sweatshirts that they always have stuff to buy. But um, the Monty's run that they have in Raynham, he's from Raynham. Um, and um, it's in, always in June. I think it's like um, close to June 21st because that is the actual date of it's always in that weekend or something in Raynham. Okay. At yeah, so when, when that time comes, uh, musicians and beyond, we will be glad to put it out there and try to help promote it as, as well as we can. Yeah, and anything we can do to help raise awareness and funds for the uh, Gold Star families and, and the honor of Specialist First Class Jared Monty and his father Paul, we, uh, we want to be a part of that. Yeah, the Mass Fallen Heroes is doing the only um, contributions right now to the um, Jared C. Monty uh, trust. Okay. So if anyone do, does want to donate, um, they could go out to Mass Fallen Heroes and they have um, where you can donate um, to Excellent. that trust. It goes to scholarships for kids. It, it, there's so much that, that trust does. So. And the website is, is simple, massfallenheroes.org. Look at you, Eric. I got it. I did my homework. You're so good. You're so good. It's, Thank we're, you. we're so honored to have you here. Aww. Really. Come in with You're a big so smile. Good. <laughs> yeah, it, you know, a lot of things come through in this uh, this conversation of ours and, and getting on that subject. It's a sad one, and it's a tough one for you to talk about. We thank you for going through that, and we can see how big your heart is uh, as you get emotional talking about it. But um, you got a lot going on. Let's talk about some of the positives that's happening. And, and Paul, Monty was one of those positives, but Absolutely. it's a sad moment. But yeah. And as you say, Paul would want you to talk about... And he about doesn't want to talk about it. <laughs> You're like, shut up. He wants you talking about what you're doing right now. So Yeah. And like in this song, too, because it says you'd be punching my arm right now. And that's what he'd be doing. Like, stop it. <laughs> uh, can I tell you, what, to be on the lighter note, I'll tell you a funny story. I was singing the national anthem for the Boston Wounded Vet Ride, uh, which is a, another great local organization that gives 100% proceeds to wounded vets. And um, they fought we ride. Yeah, so... Um, <clears throat> Paul would always lead in the truck that ride with the, the leaders would be the, um, you know, the honorees and then he would have the truck and stuff like that. So I say when you are saying the national anthem and, uh, you know, on this big stage, there's probably over 10,000 people, you know, there's usually about 8,000 bikes, give or take plus or minus. And then you have all the other people there and volunteers and everything. And so I'm on the stage and I'm singing the national anthem and it's just this great event. And then afterwards, like Paul's right there at the end of the stage at the back. And he's like, I'm like, oh, hi, Paul. So I give him this big hug, and he whispers in my ear, your fly is down. Oh, boy. <laughs> I was like, oh, my gosh. I'm like, cover me, Paul. Cover me. As I like, I'm like, oh, I hope no one saw it. I was covered by a stage or something or a platform, thankfully. So I don't think anyone noticed. But that's my worst fear. But Paul was right there. To well, now me. I'm sure you double check before you go on stage. <laughs> Every time. That is funny. Yeah, the national anthem's a big thing for you. You've done, yeah. if I'm correct, the Bruins. Yes. The Red Sox. Yes. Not the Patriots yet. Yes. Did the Revolution. But the Revolution. Not, but yeah. So you pretty much have all of the New England teams except the Patriots. Can we work on that for me? Yeah. We can work I, on I that. I understand. Yeah. Bob Kraft, Try. if you're listening. Please. All right. Pay some attention here. You got all my Shannon friends Jackson's singing. Shannon Jackson's ready to sing down in Foxborough. Got it. No yeah. problem. All right. I would love so, it. So, yeah, you, you get around out there singing all over to honor America. And that's exactly, that's exactly why I do it. Yep. Like, if I, you know, I've never been one of, you know, money. I came, I'm a single mom with two kids. You know, my mom, not me, my mom. And growing up and always just being grateful for what we have. And I'm like, well, if I can give back to honor our country, honor those who served our country, to give pride to that, not make it my own, make it just something that, and then as I started singing it, in uniform and singing it more often. I sang it in college. I did once in my high school, like, or whatever, but it built and built, and um, I'd have veterans come up to me and say, I've not heard it ever sung in that way, or thank you, with tears in their eyes, which you know, like, not very common uh, to see um, in the military world, um, emotion like that, and uh, so, in meeting families and everything else, it, I do it for that. 
by you know g- going on to the Bruins and stuff is an amazing and I get to bring a guest with me and it's always an awesome experience but I get that moment that anyone that might be listening or in the crowd that for that moment we're all in one unity um, is an amazing feeling and yeah. if I can make them feel proud of of being an American then fantastic fantastic Everything. most of your songs that you write are from personal experiences is oh that? yeah yes yeah Okay, so I don't know if I'd want to be on the other side of this one, but I went through your songs, <laughs> okay. and <laughs> you're like, where is this going, John? Yeah, yeah. No, I can um, tell. So I went through your songs, yeah. and it was hard to pick a favorite. Really? Oh. Yeah, I mean, there were so you. many good ones, but you know which one really Listen. stuck out, and oh. I wouldn't want to be on the other side, that poor guy? Red truck. Red truck. <laughs> yeah, about the V8. It's so true, though. Oh, man. I can't even make it up. I tell people the only thing that's not true in that lyric is that we didn't have a boat. He had a friend that had a boat, and we would do that, but we didn't own a boat. Huh. That's the only thing that was wrong. And I'm telling you, I'm mad that he got the dog. Uh, really? He kept it. What kind of dog was that. it? It's like a box, uh, a pit mix, American Staffordshire mix. Name was I, I heard it bit him His in the toe Boston. anyway, so it doesn't matter. He, he deserved it. Yeah. Wow. Well, you know, it was, uh, yeah, it was not. It's a great song. It is. It's a great song. Well, my band is like, can you break up with more? Like, can you? Ha-? I'm like, no, my relationship's good right now. I don't. <laughs> I'll tell you, honestly, that song is, it's a hit. Thank you. L- like, it's a hit that hasn't hit yet. It's. I know, I wish it, it was has like- that. It has that it factor of everything that you need for a really good song. could ever fix so you can keep the dog in the big back yard I guess you're gonna have to ask for the keys to your mama's car cause I'm shutting the door I can't take no more
I wrote that with Connie Mims and Nancy Boudet. Nancy Boudet um, is here in Mass, but also back and forth in Canada. Connie is in Texas and a, a big um, uh, proponent to my newest releases as well. And she's in Texas, but we go back and lived in Nashville some time and go back. And she's also a singer-songwriter. But I remember when I was like, okay, I want to do my first EP. I've been playing with my band, doing covers for years, and it's going really well. Now i got to get my originals out there and record it, and I want to go to Nashville. And I was like, um, I said, I got, I got this one idea that's just pretty country. But I always tell people when I, I sing it, I'm like, you don't, this is not your typical country song where you got to rewind it backwards to get everything back. I told him, please, you can keep it all. Just give me my truck. And it's so true because he drove my truck. I traveled more often, so he took the truck and we had a little Mazda 3. So every time we'd get into a fight, I'm like, I want my truck back. Like, I was always like, <laughs> I, was, I loved that truck. Um, and my father's a Ford mechanic, and so to me, Fords were, you know, that, that's a thing. And my Ford F-150, and I had a motorcycle. Like, it was like. So but you got rid of the truck up. and you pulled up in a Jeep. Uh, uh, yeah, okay. now I have four-door because I needed gotcha. the room. Gotcha, I, I saw. I the two-door, but. Yeah. yeah, yeah, this is a hybrid, so... But it's a I small guess. van that can fit in a two-door Jeep. Yeah, it's not, <laughs> it doesn't fit anything. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, how to get awesome. bigger. Awesome, awesome. So what else do you have going on right now? Yeah, so I have a full band. Um, so I took some time off from that, playing live. A lot of personal stuff going on and uh, just recording or whatever and whatever it may be, right? Took some time off. A lot of reasons for it and other... And then so I have this band that I was a fill-in for for a while locally. They were called Tailgates Down. They had a male and female lead, really great, tight band. They did so well. And um, when their female couldn't do it, I would jump in because I knew the guys. They were all from our local area. And so, um, but then the male and female vocalists that they had dissipated. And I said, well, you know, I could use a band full time. And so we've been all throughout COVID kind of just practicing and tightening up that and starting to develop, you know, where our shows will be and, and stuff. And I had recorded new music during that time. So I went down to Texas during the pandemic and took advantage of that time and wrote. But this is all thankfully due to the success of Answer the Call afforded me the opportunity to go and write and get back on the road again, which is amazing. And I'm so grateful. Excellent. I, I love that word, grateful. Yeah. Yeah. Gratitude is just yeah. such a, a big thing that everyone doesn't harness. 100%. Yeah, it's so. amazing. Tell us about some of the new music that you have coming out. Yeah, so I have in the studio right now, but I'm going to do the vocals up here. But in, uh, down in Texas, they recorded it, working with a local artist, Tim Bono. And he also a last name that I always screw up, by the way. Never, I can never. So hopefully I did it right. Actually, Mark screwed listen. up your first name. Did he? <laughs> Thank you, John, for bringing that back up. Yes. <laughs> How did you say it? I don't remember. I didn't even know I did until John pointed it out. I don't think anyone at home would have known I did if John hadn't pointed it out. We love. We have so much fun doing our podcasts. I love it. I, our, love, our guests, I love you two. You're just like, yeah. Our, our guests do. We play off together. each other. And, mm -hmm. You know, we're with uh, Shanna Jackman. Oh, look at it. He's got his notes. He's going to unplug uh, you. No, no. <laughs> Mark was going to unplug me. Mark, remember, I have the final say uh -oh. because He's I'm the only that. one that knows how these little buttons. Actually, I don't. The board. <laughs> it's all smoke and mirrors. I pretend that I know what these little buttons do. As long as you're able to set it up, yeah, I just, up with something on the other. I just sit here and I push things up and down. It's I don't know what the hell it's doing. <laughs> you know, it's doing something. That's all that we have to know. But no, we're, we're yeah. grateful. I mean, we've only been doing this for six months. And we've had really? some incredible right. guests, yes. including you. Oh, well, thank you for including um, me in that. You know, and it, it's blown up. I mean, yeah. people listen to it. Our guest podcast comes out. All of their friends have been sharing it. So yeah. that does nothing but help everybody. And all the friends of our previous guests now know our new guests. So it's suddenly just blown up it's the listens how, are crazy like, big and small this community is so yeah. like i've listened to them too and like i'm like oh you have vanessa on my friend like and we've known each other through national anthem stuff too and yeah. some of the military uh, groups that um, i told you about so um it is really great and um you know it's just appreciative to recognize us locals around here and yeah well you guys work hard it. i mean to be a musician nowadays is is super hard yeah. I mean, we say it every single podcast, but most people, including yourself, have that love for it, and they're not doing it for the money. 
No, yeah, no. That's what I was like. Oh, this is when Answer the Call did so well. I was like, oh my gosh, this is so great. I can actually afford like a sound system I can bring now and not have to hire somebody or I can right. do things to continue on the journey of this music. But no, it's super true. Like you, you love it, but um, it's taxing too. It's hard for sure. And like I started out playing professionally publicly before really social media. I'm going to sound really bold to some of the local musicians that are don't worry about no, it. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, but you know, honestly technology has gone so fast in a very short period of time. It has. So um but I was really playing a lot in the um mid 2000 2005, 2009, 2014, all of that era and um, where I was passing out postcards and I was trying to build a fan base organically that way. And as much as it's like easier, it's harder today because you do have the ability to be online. Like I'm on live Facebook right now and um, you, you have to be able to reach a larger audience. But the industry now knows you can do that. So that takes the weight off of them a little bit. And they're like, OK, well, you know, it's in order to be. Yes, it's on you. If you can do it, you got to spend the time. You got to get those followers. You have to. You know, I think it's an important thing for the audience. You know, one of the reasons we wanted to do this so people could, un, you know, meet new, meet, hear new music, meet new musicians, network a little bit more, but highlight performers. And it's also an opportunity for you guys to let the audience know what, what it takes to get here. And, and mm -hmm. for, for L, other musicians starting out, to hear what you have to do going door to door, you know, knocking on people's mm -hmm. door, you know, going to bar to bar. Last night you were in the bar in, in uh, Peabody. Mm -hmm. How long did it take you to drive here to see us today? Yeah, it was like an hour and a half. I right. think. So, you, I mean, you're, you're commuting every day. Yeah. And it's, you'll probably have a show sometime soon. So you're yeah, going we're going to be in New York. Yeah, yeah, we're going to be in New York in September, October, September. Yeah. yeah so if you're, if you're looking to start out, listen to some of what our, our, our guests are saying mm -hmm. and, and, and learn from it because it, you can save you some, some time. And, Absolutely. And we were like the, the local community here when we were first starting. That's what we did. We talked to each other. Like, I would love talking to other musicians. And um, if they like, oh, like, how did you do this? I don't like I'm happy to share what like we don't have. We're not in the place here to have managers and, and, and huge mentors. If you went to Nashville and that's even harder because right? you can't tr always trust everybody. You really got to gain that network Got to be there for a couple of years and, and yeah. dive into that. But um, so, yeah, like we got to We got to help each other out. It shouldn't be competition or anything. It's all healthy and and help each other grow. Because I didn't have anyone to mentor me and I had to figure it all out. And um, I'm not like saying I've done. I, I mean, I don't know. But like, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm happy where I am. You, you and put I'm a lot of work thankful in for it, and, so. and, and it's yeah. paying off. So good for yeah, you. Thank you. Now, you're talking about mentoring people. Mm hmm. Do you ever have younger kids come up to you and mm -hmm. say, I want to be like you? Uh, you know, what kind of advice do you give them? I even have parents of children. Like I've um, a friend of mine, I was just um, she was very in awe of me singing. And then um, she wanted to sing for me. And I was like, OK. And she was singing like a Disney song. And I go to him. I said, you got to put her in drama and vocal less like stuff than now like I think she would be perfect for it. And like you need to but I mean she's got something there and, and, and it builds confidence it builds like there's so much that it does you know not just that if oh they'll be famous someday that's you know my mom didn't she'd always was with me every step of the way but I mean do we rationally think that something like this would happen I mean we always I'm like mom I'm gonna be in that limo someday you see that no one even drives limos anymore what is it <laughs> <laughs> that's what I would say I'm like I'm gonna be in one of those someday but, um, and he did, and she, he, he shares with me all her recitals and all this stuff, and she's just blossoming, you know. But absolutely, like, I tell kids, like, um, you know, vocal lessons for sure. It's nature and nurture. Like, it's both those things. Like, I grew up with it. My mother was singing. Her mother was singing. Sure, there's, like, maybe a natural genetic thing. Who knows? But, but you've got to train that. You've got to know how to use that. Your vocal is, like, an, it's absolutely an instrument. And so last night, I have, I've been dealing with tons of allergies, it was really hard for me to overcome that and compromise. And my guitarist was like, no, you did really great. I'm like, man, you have no idea behind the scenes what I'm going through right now. It was just uh, awful. But um, yeah, so there's a lot breathing. And so I would tell them that. For a while, I was looking into doing like lessons to provide vocal performance and teaching kid confidence in how to perform because there's a lot of great singers, but they're afraid to go behind the mic and in front of people. And so I feel like that 
for me, I was one of those, like karaoke. Like if I was done a karaoke song with them, like my mom, I would just, oh, I stunk at it. That was terrible. And I walk off stage and my head's down. My mother's like, don't you dare put your head up. Like, you know, and, and uh, I started learning how much performance and all that and believing in what you do and believing in yourself, even though you're going to be the biggest critic in the world for yourself. Because um, that's just part of the makeup of it. You know, the, the, as you said, your, your voice is an instrument. There's a physical aspect to it, and you have to work at it. Yeah. And telling a mother to get the daughter into lessons, whether yes. it's acting or vocal, that's work. And at a very young age, you'll learn that in order for it to happen, you have to put the work in. And it's psychological, as you just mentioned. You have to train yourself to believe in yourself, to be confident, and you have to. It, it's a learned behavior. All the while, people in your school are making fun of you. Probably, like I've had so many bullies that were just kind of like, "Oh, you're showing off," you know. And then when one of your friends are like, "Oh, can you sing for us?" You were terrified to do it. I think that's what makes me really nervous singing in front of smaller crowds. Like I can do the Bruins and you know all these big crowds, but I can walk away and not really see everyone's right. faces or know what the their reaction is. Yeah, yeah. Right. exactly. Right. So if we asked you to sing a song right now, it. Yeah. Did I get a little blotchy all of a sudden, like yeah, nerves? Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know, and Vanessa did it like that. And I was like, right? oh, she's good, man. Well, Alfie sang. Alfie did Alfie sing. Alfie sang. Her dog. Oh, I, I did hear that. Yes, I yeah. did. I could not believe it on cue. That was amazing. That's, yeah. that's training. That's the, the work <laughs> that Vanessa exactly. has put in with Alfie. Yes, a lot of dedicated time. She's so funny. She's the best. Her. She's the best. <laughs> Yeah, I can't believe her dog really did. That was amazing. But it is, it, it, it's training, it's constant training, not just like, a, my mother was able to um, afford, like, and she, I'm sure she saved for a long time for me to go to the Franklin School of Performing Arts and do the vocal training and everything else in drama. And then it was, um, then it continued, and then I had vocal lessons, and then in college I did some stuff too. So there was always, like, you got to keep doing it, because like anything, you can fall behind, so... Let's see, you have Instagram pages and Facebook. If how do, how do people find you, where you're going to be, what you're doing, how to download all your beautiful music? Yeah, so um, shannonjackman.com, S-H-A-N-N-A-J-A-C-K-M-A-N.com has everything there as far as where you can find me. But all digital music, um, where digital music is sold, you can have my music. Spotify, iTunes, or anything else there. Um, I have like... I forget how many, 12,000 listeners a week in wow. one of them. Um, I've reached over 2 million on Spotify, I think it is. Um, so those are great places to go. But my website will have videos, have a little bio. Um, you can get merch on my site. And um, so, yeah, there's a lot of, um, that's probably the best place. But I'm on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, all that great stuff. So, um, and TikTok's where, you know, the song went viral answer the call but I'm a dispatcher sharing it I didn't even know it was uh, out there so doing awesome. that so, yeah and that helps us right it helps local musicians just hitting the like button Absolutely. sharing it it's huge it's huge so yeah same thing with us I mean all, all of your yeah. listeners that are listening to this would appreciate if they follow musicians and beyond and and we put out all of your yes. information too yeah please do i know and you guys go above and beyond and you like share where we're playing next and stuff like that we, I, we you, I really appreciate that you didn't have to do that where are so you playing really next nice. what, what do you got coming yeah, up speaking of so september 10th uh, i'm gonna be performing the national anthem for the uh run for the fallen which is uh sp sponsored by the a uh, run by the military families thought about trying to do a tribute to Paul um, in that I'm not sure if I emotionally will be able to. Um, it's, would, I don't know. I, I told them I'd have to kind of uh, feel that one out. September 11th, going to be at Indian Ranch in Webster. Great, great venue. They're doing a local country fest. Um, I'll be performing the national anthem there. What's so great about that venue, too, is they always still continue to honor the national anthem before every show. Yes. Um, so. Um, and what day is that? September 11th. Which is pretty special that you'll be performing the national anthem there yeah, on that yeah. day. Yeah. Years and years I used to participate uh, with this uh, organization called Thanks to Yanks. Um, and they always honored on 9-11 a dinner for all military families, all first responders, a free dinner. And they did that for a long time. Um, I think they're, they're still giving to families and, and still doing so much for families. So, um, so yeah, it's nice to switch gears and be playing some... This is always a very emotional event, too. Sure. Um, but, yeah, it'll be great to be doing it there, and then I'll be playing. And there's um, 
a lot of great local musicians. We're all going to be playing. I'll be there all day, though. Um, I'll be doing the National Anthem and doing a small acoustic set in the afternoon, but I'll be there selling merch and just saying hi to everybody and seeing friends and, of course, supporting all the other musicians that are there, too. Which and is you awesome. sell merch on your website, that. I do. ShannaJackman.com, Mark. I love it. <laughs> Great I segue over there. Great I brought segue. some for you guys, too. Really? I, I yeah. love the way wow. you do. We like, we like presents. Shanna Jackman. We were, we were going to get you a present, too, on your way in. This is my present. Do you want to know what your present was going to be? Well, if it's not going to be, yes. You, you, you might, I'm going to move because you might hit me over the head oh, with the oh. microphone. Okay. We were going to get you a watch. Oh. <laughs> yeah. My boyfriend's probably listening right now. Okay. His comment, not mine. Mm. I'm just serious. It is ju- like so. There's always this joke about my tardiness. I <laughs> there's a lot of reasons I could justify part of it, um, but also, uh, yeah, our, we were supposed to meet before, and I was like, okay, yeah, I'm just I'm gonna be on the road for my job because I have full time now job. I work with um, people with intellectual and developmental disabilities, so still helping the community, which is really important to me. But um, have weekends off. Um, <laughs> so um, I was like leaving and then I was like, it's time to try. I didn't get home as like an app. Oh, yeah. And I logged in and saw one. I, I forget who it was. I saw one with the like probably texting me like, OK, we're going to have to reschedule. This is like and you're so and that's OK. It. You know something you do so much for so many organizations, other people, America, yourself, family, everyone. So. We'll let that one slide. Well, that's why I wanted to come here. I'm like, I'll do the drive. Trust me, I'll come in. Yeah, well, so Mark and I are worth the hour and a half drive to come Absolutely. see anyways. It's a, Absolutely. You know, you, you get the podcast and a comedy show all for the price of one ticket. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. On a serious note, next weekend I, uh, I'm driving down with some friends to a uh, Air Force reunion with guys that I was stationed with for a number of years, and we've all kept in touch. It's been over 30-something years since we were all together. Uh, but they do a reunion here and there, so I'm going down there. I'm going to make sure that we play your version of the national anthem at our reunion this uh, next weekend on Labor Day Thank down you. in Pennsylvania. So looking forward to seeing the guys down there and uh, sharing what we're doing up here. Well, maybe play We've Got You Back if you haven't heard that yet, too. I have, and it's we my, will play uh, that, too. Yeah, yeah, that's one of, and, and Paul was actually in that music video. Yes. Um, and uh, the truck was in, and I in the video, I did a motorcycle ride depicting a lot of the rides that we do as charity rides and stuff. And like always, he led that ride. And I was right behind on the motorcycle, if I don't know if you saw that. But And there's a lot of great local organizations that were uh, came and supported that music video. I wanted the people in the community watching it know how much we love and you support know, we, them. We, we talk about uh, the, what we love to do is networking. And I just thought of it, you know, right now, thinking about, you know, having Michael Pace in the time we did. He did a song with Marsh Milko. Uh, Marshawn and Miller from the Boston Bruins. That's this this brand here. And I just realized what shirt I was wearing as I was saying it, right? Oh, so they do a lot to support brain. the military. Yeah. Um, so we're going to have to connect you with Marsh Milko and Michael Pace to make sure yeah. that we get you involved with the organization. They obviously get some notoriety being on the ice and, and, and get some fame coming out of that. But they have their own little thing going on. And you might like that. Uh, but um, Any chance I can have the opportunity. Like I'm always grateful if I can just say thank you. To me, it's music. It's a lot easier for me to say thanks because I feel like thank you is not enough. It's a great but. way to do it. We appreciate it. Yeah, we appreciate you coming in. We have Shanna Jackman. Hi. You did it. Um, you did of it. course, he's, so he's got a big smile on his face. He's so <laughs> like, like so I just climbed Mount Washington or something. You know, it's um, no. It, it's such an honor to have you here. You're very inspirational. Thank Again, you, you do a lot for everyone. Your writing skills, your singing, totally unbelievable. I mean. Anyone listening, please follow her, uh, check out her merch, download some music, support your local musician. You know, this is, it's been fun. I'll be having some more local shows. I mean, right now we're going to New York in October. We're going to be back and forth. I just had an appearance in Pennsylvania, so they're just kind of moving around. But um, I love being back here. And even at Stancy's, they were looking at other dates. So hopefully I'll be back over there in Peabody. And awesome. We'll be looking forward to having you close to home and performing. And one thing yes. I'll say to the audience listening, uh, watch for something that comes out of this uh, day. Our interview today is going to spurn a little bit of something that's going to be creative and it's going to be great for local musicians because I think uh, I think we're going to put something together to, to try and uh, pull more local artists together and, and put everyone in the same room to help each other out. Love it. Love yeah, this is, thank you guys. This so is awesome. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for it having me. It was me. awesome. Thanks. Yeah.
Yeah. And, Our and friend Mark too. We we yeah and uh, yep Mark uh, for in, making the introductions. Mark, Mark Bucchino. Yeah, and uh, so we got to thank you for taking the ride in. We got to thank you for coming in here and talking with us, and we got to thank you for being our friend. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you for cry. being our friend. Yeah. Thank you. There you go again. Just what? Oh, it's your thing. <laughs> this is your, Mark. If I want to say thank you, I want to be a friend too. I just want to say thank you. Should we all listen? Hands and listen. This isn't all about I'm you, just dude. Glad you came in and buckled up today. This isn't all I'm about you. Oh yeah, buckle up. I'll get a bang buckle up. Buckle up. Buckle up. I'm not going to get a bang. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Seriously. Thank you for being a friend. I love you guys. Thanks.